The sun won't last forever. There'll come a day when it goes out. When will it happen? In billions of years? Or perhaps millions? But what if it has already gone out? Hang on a second. What? In 1970, American scientists Raymond Davis and John Bacall studied the inner structure of the sun. A special device was installed in a deep underground mine. It made it possible to register the effects of neutrinos, exclusive particles produced in the sun's core. The particles themselves are very difficult to detect, but traces of their flight are detectable through some indirect signs. Right after launching the device, scientists faced a strange and frightening problem. The detected neutrino flux was exactly three times weaker than expected. First, Davis and Bacall checked the calculations and how the experiments were run. No error was found. Moreover, other specialists couldn't find any errors either. The neutrino flux from the solar core was indeed three times weaker than it should have been. There was no doubt about that. Astronomers were horrified because at first, this meant only one thing for them. For some unclear reason, the solar core's activity was three times weaker than usual. No one could determine when this drop in activity happened. If the core's activity decreased long ago, then the sun could go out at any moment, even tomorrow or this very second. Unlike astronomers, nuclear physicists just shrugged their shoulders and said that neutrinos were largely understudied particles. Perhaps we were misguided about some of their properties. Fortunately, they were right. Scientists survived the end of the world. But for how long? To find out our native star's future, we can use a time machine, but not necessarily to go forward. The way the star dies, be it colorful fireworks or a slow and sad demise, depends on how the star was born and what were its initial materials. That's some really good food for thought for those who believe in fate. In this video, you'll find out how much the sun is worth, how round and large it is, when it will go out, what the sun's temperature is, why we see the light from 170,000 years ago, and finally, when the sky will turn pitch dark and completely starless. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video. It all started with a cloud of dust and gas. The ancient gas and dust nebula was in relative equilibrium until something happened. There is a version that an ancient massive star exploded in a supernova somewhere nearby. The resulting shockwave turned out to be strong enough to trigger fluctuations in the gas-dust nebula, which created points of attraction. This theory is supported by the fact that when studying meteorites, scientists discovered quite a few elements that could have been formed only during a supernova explosion. The points of attraction that arose grew like a snowball. Over time, the size of this giant ball became grandiose amounting to a quintillion tons. Such a gigantic mass was compressed under the effect of gravitational forces while simultaneously being heated by internal pressure. This went on until thermonuclear reactions started. In the central part, the sun's temperature rose up to 15 million, and the pressure reached hundreds of billions of atmospheres. Thermonuclear reactions precipitated until, at a certain point, the pressure from the thermonuclear furnace was balanced by its own gravity. The star as we know it has appeared. Still young and a little different, but still much like the sun we know. Despite being very familiar, the sun will turn out to be a very curious star indeed if you dig a little deeper. First, it is very large. Its diameter is 1 million. 392,700 kilometers, while that of the Earth is 12,742 kilometers. That means 109 Earth-sized planets will fit in the diameter of the Sun. Second, it is super heavy, almost 2 by 10 to the 30th power kilogram. 
This is 332,946 times the mass of the Earth. If this figure doesn't tell you much, here's another one to keep things in perspective. The mass of the Sun is 99.86% of the entire solar system taken together, with Earth, Jupiter, all other planets and their satellites, all asteroids and comets combined. Statistically speaking, there is hardly anything in the solar system apart from the Sun. Third, it is very hot. The temperature reaches 5,505 Celsius on the Sun's surface. That's a lot, but still not too impressive. However, its core is much hotter, reaching up to a whopping 15 million degrees. It is there that thermonuclear reactions take place and gamma radiation is born, which is then converted into visible light. Interestingly enough, the photons of the generated gamma radiation wander inside the sun along a complex trajectory for a very long time, on average about 170,000 Earth years. When transferring heat from the core to the photosphere, each gamma ray in the sun's core is converted into several million photons of visible light before leaving for space. And only from that moment on, the light needs more than eight minutes to reach the Earth. That means we are still warmed by the light that was born when Homo sapiens had not even gone beyond Africa. And by the way, the sunlight is not yellow. Our star is called a yellow dwarf, but this is just a term. It seems yellow only to us. Its light acquires a yellow tint near the surface of our planet, due to the short wavelength part of the spectrum being scattered and absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. However, the Sun appears white in space. Also, the Sun is very round. It would seem what could be more obvious, but in fact, we know very well that nature does not particularly favor regular shapes. The Earth is round too, but the Sun is much rounder. The shape of the Earth is a flattened spheroid instead of a true sphere with an equilateral bulge of 42.72 kilometers. For the Sun, the difference between the hypothetical width and height doesn't exceed 10 kilometers. It may sound funny, but the Sun is also very expensive, literally. In a 2014 study, a team led by astrophysicist Nicholas Graves of the University of Liege found that there are eight gold atoms per billion hydrogen atoms in the Sun. This doesn't seem like a big deal, but in fact, this amounts to 2.34 quintillion tons on a short scale. It's equivalent to the famous dwarf planet Ceres, almost 1,000 kilometers in diameter, being made of pure gold. This is the Sun as we know it, but it's constantly changing. The Sun is gradually warming up because the helium atoms in the core are denser than the hydrogen atoms from which they were fused. This increases the gravitational pressure on the core, which is counteracted by the gradual increase in the fusion rate. In the 4.5 billion years of the Sun's existence, it has become 30% brighter and will continue to brighten by 1% every 100 million years. In the Sun's lifetime, about half of all the hydrogen available there burned down to its center. However, the Sun's form will remain virtually unchanged from what we know in the following 5 billion years. After the Sun core depletes its hydrogen supply, the Sun will grow in size and become a red giant. This will have a profound effect on the Earth. The temperature will rise and the oceans will boil away, wiping out life as we know it. Eventually, the Sun will swell, engulfing Mercury, then Venus, and finally, the Earth. However, scientists aren't completely unanimous here. Perhaps our planet will be able to avoid absorption but this changes little for humanity. At that time, earthly conditions would very much resemble inferno. Then, having completely spent the thermonuclear fuel, the sun will no longer be able to hold its own outer layers. The red giant will begin to shed matter layer by layer, gradually becoming smaller. 
At the final life stage, the sun will become a white dwarf, delighting extraterrestrial astronomers of the future with a new planetary nebula. Its shape may turn out to be very bizarre due to the influence of planets. But that's not the end. The white dwarf will continue to emit light, which means it will cool down. It will take the sun one quadrillion years to cool down completely. That's one million billion years. This will literally take ages. In that epoch, there will be no free hydrogen in the universe left for new stars to be born. All the old ones will go out or explode by that time. The sky will turn completely black. Can you imagine a pitch dark, completely starless sky? And our sun will no longer be the sun we know it today, but a black dwarf, a cold ball of carbon. Is this the end? Not really. Further scenarios are still only obscure hypotheses. True black dwarfs haven't appeared yet because they take an incredibly long time to form. The ideas on the future fate of black dwarfs differ radically, ranging from slow evaporation to becoming a supernova. Sounds incredible? Not really. After such a huge span of time, our universe will be completely different, and there are serious reasons to believe that it will be something completely unexpected. In the coming episodes, we'll tell you in more detail what can await our entire universe after the last star finally goes out.